Jesus made it clear that religion was for helping mankind, not trapping mankind in, or a person in a double bind dynamic established by human beings who, no doubt, routinely broke the rules they created for others. Christ from the Cross. If we are Christian, and even if we're not, we can look at the final actions of Jesus Christ in his lifetime to learn about different religions and where they are getting it right. We know that Jesus Christ prayed during his life. He regularly went off to the Father to be in silent communication with that which nobody could see. Clearly, we need to do the same. We know that the religious order of the day was strict conformance with the rituals and rubrics as set out by the religious authorities. But Christ did not always agree with them, and he challenged them robustly. Christ thought for himself. One clear example of Jesus Christ challenging comes when his friends were criticized for working on the Sabbath. He responded, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is the Lord even of the Sabbath. That's from Mark 2, 27. This line of scripture tells us so much. One, he is saying to them, stop trying to get people on technicalities. He is exposing their absurdity because what happened actually was that the apostles were picking grains of wheat to eat. They were hungry. And the idea was that you had God's teaching in the Ten Commandments and you had then the many stipulations that human beings created as their interpretations. But if you had the sense God gave a goat, as they say, you would conclude that getting a little food to eat when you're hungry cannot possibly constitute breaking the Sabbath. Jesus made it clear that religion was for helping mankind, not trapping mankind in, or a person in a double bind dynamic established by human beings who, no doubt, routinely broke the rules they created for others. He is also saying in that passage that he's the ultimate judge, not persons. We would do well to take that on board fully in every religion. Another example is where Christ is crucified between two thieves, and one acknowledges not only his own guilt, but the Lord's innocence. The Lord replies to him, truly, this day you shall be with me in paradise, Luke 23. I don't think we break that down enough. What is he actually saying there? He wasn't saying, gee, I'd like to forgive you. I'd like to help you and get you into heaven, but I can't because these other people have condemned you and I have to follow their rules. I mean, it's laughable. He was saying, I'm in charge of the rules and I overrule what I overrule. I am the ultimate judge and you are coming to heaven with me because your disposition is correct. Let's unpack a little more. Jesus was not concerned about the past action, although let's assume it wasn't good. Jesus was about to establish that the Father's love and his sacrifice would be enough to forgive all mistakes, even when those mistakes elevated to the level, level of sin. Not all mistakes do. Sin is deliberate and holds malice, you know. He was happy with the man's humility before God. That was all that was needed to get this man into heaven, into eternity. And it's the very same for you, regardless of any rules established by human beings. The short summary, it's not so much about past actions as it is about current disposition. If we can be honest with ourselves before God, there will be a great outcome for every one of us.